How to set Bonjour, up Retro for your Raspberry Pi 5. Well, it's that time again where I don't know what I'm doing video-wise, so... I'm gonna do something that I, I've seen a lot of people so talk about online recently, but don't show how to do. So, I'm gonna show you uh, the Raspberry Pi 5. I'm gonna show you how to set up Retro Pi on it, and I'm gonna show you how to actually use it. Because, for some reason, everyone online is too scared to do that. But first, a quick breakdown. What is a Raspberry Pi? Well, the Raspberry Pi is this little thingy here. Well, this is the box anyways. I already have mine set up and I've got Raspberry Pi already on it, ready to go. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to set up anyways because, well, you're going to kind of need to see. So basically, a Raspberry Pi is basically, to put it lightly, it's a mini computer. Um, it runs an operating system on it and it play well, works sort of like most things. Um, but you, a lot of people use it for emulation, at least that's what I use it for. Um, I got into Raspberry Pi building a few years ago, and I built myself an arcade machine, this thing here, uh, using a Raspberry Pi 4B, um, and I've been running Retro Pi off it to play all the arcade games like MAME, PSP, PS1, uh, you know, Nintendo 64, GameCube, Wii, what have it, what, you name it, NES. I've been running all of it off it and it works beautifully. So last year when they announced the Raspberry Pi 5, uh, yeah, I had to get my hands on it uh, because I had a lot of fun building the arcade machine. But I thought I want to do it as a sort of a home console where you can just play, um, you know, normal, well, I guess other era of gaming consoles into one thing, get it to run at like 4K, all that sort of stuff. Um, and, you know, had a lot of fun doing the arcade machine. So I thought, oh, yeah, dude, fuck it, we'll do it. And it's point being my Raspberry Pi 5 it arrived uh, for my birthday, which was awesome because, um, yeah, just had my birthday come up, Raspberry Pi 5 arrived, so I thought, oh well, we'll give it a try. And when I did some of my research, got to set up emulators and stuff like that on there, people show how to do, uh, well, using the emulators, but no one really explains how to set it up. So that's what this video is going to be. I'm going to show you what you need to do, what you need, um, and sort of a no-nonsense, to quote Mr. Wonder Waffles, a no-nonsense guide of how to set up the Raspberry Pi 5 Retro Pi. Because I can't be asked trying to show uh, how to set up Dolphin or anything like that. Because believe it or not, it is a very simple thing to do. So setting up is going to be very easy. But point being, we'll actually, we'll actually get into it because we're like two minutes in and I haven't actually shown anything yet. So. Let's do it. Well, first things first, you need like three main things is you need an SD card. So depending if you buy a retro pipe with an SD card, you get one with it. Um, you need an SD card reader. So one of these, not that one, it's in my pockets. Yeah, you need an SD card reader, one of these things to actually, you know, write the files. And then you need an actual, well, SD card reader. So just something you can actually read your SD card on uh, when you set it up and it'll be fairly simple, but yes. Now comes the fun part. Next thing you kind of need is a computer or laptop or whatever you want to use to sort of set this all up. It is a very simple thing to do, um, you know, setting up wise. So you just need to download the Raspberry Pi reader thing. Yeah, so you need the Raspberry Pi imager. Anyways, upon doing that, you just open up your Raspberry Pi reader and it's very simple. So first you need to choose your device. So what we're doing is Raspberry Pi 5. For your operating system, it is better if you just use the Opera, uh, well, the Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. And then for your storage, you just choose whichever one you want. You go to next and you can choose your settings. So first you choose your actual host name. You choose your username and password if you want to set up a username and password. You want to choose up your internet if you want to do your internet. Um, and then just your time zone and your keyboard layout. Once you've saved that, just apply that to your OS, just continue, and then let it write, it would like, or write to the SD card. Don't worry about that, it just means that you're just gonna get, like, disconnected or whatever, but it's fine, still writes, everything's good. And once you've actually started loading, you'll get a verifying stage, and once the verifying stage is done, you'll actually be able to take it out, um, and actually put it into your Pi to get started. And there we go, it is done! And now for the fun part, putting it into the Raspberry Pi and setting up the actual OS. Once your console is off, put the SD card in and then give her a little click to turn them on. And then it will boot your OS for the first time and you'll be ready to do the setup. Just make sure that you have a keyboard and a mouse plugged in. Um, so I'm just using a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse to do the setup. Um, 
But yeah, just make sure you have one on hand because you're going to need one. Anyways, once you start it up, you will be greeted with the welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop bullcrap. Um, and, you know, you just need to do the normal setup stuff for the OS. So choose your country. Then you just do a username and password. So I'm just going to do my name for my username. And then the password, I'm just going to do something easy like Raspberry Pi 5. And then you just confirm it. Choose your internet whenever it decides to show up. Choose what you want as your main uh, software. So I'm using Chromium instead of Firefox. And then obviously it'll do an update thing. So just update your console actual machine. Whilst it's downloading, give your animal a big old rub. Because, I don't know, good luck or something. Yeah. And after a while, you'll get your system is up to date. Once it's complete, it'll ask you to restart the system and then you'll be booted into your first starting thing of Raspberry Pi OS. And now you have your OS. Now that you have everything here, you can actually install RetroPie, which is, believe it or not, relatively easy to do. First of all, you just need to open a terminal tab. And then secondly, you need to open a web browser tab. So just for the meantime, minimize your terminal tab. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go to GitHub. So we're gonna to go to GitHub RetroPie. So the first one right here. Then we're gonna to go to RetroPie Setup. And what we're looking for is the setup codes just here. So all you have to do is just copy the text here, go to your terminal, paste it in, click your enter on your keyboard and let it do its first download. Once that's complete, you go back, you grab your second one, your second bunch of codes, which is right underneath it. You go over back to your terminal, you paste it in like so. Then you do your second bunch of downloads, which can take a few seconds, a few minutes, whatever it needs to be. And once you're ready, you grab your third code, you put it in, you copy it or whatever, you paste it, you enter it, and then once it recognizes it, it will do its download. Then you will be greeted with this screen. So just say okay. And it will take you to the basic install, manage packages, con you know, configuration, all that other stuff. So all you want to do is you want to do your basic install, you want to do your update, and then what you want to do after that is go to configuration, auto start, and then start your emulation station at boost. So pretty much after that simple thing, it's like every other RetroPie thing, uh, you do the basic install, uh, they can take anywhere from a, like a few minutes to an hour or longer. When I first did it, um, it took me about 16 hours to download all the packages. The basic one should only take at least an hour, maybe a bit more. Um, if you're downloading everything, it will take a long ass time, but you will get all the consoles and stuff like that. But it's like everything else, once you restart the console and you reboot it, um, you just, you know, go onto the emulation station and you can play your games. You set up the controllers you want. So for me, I've got the wireless controller uh, with the keyboard and then you just set it up and everything like that. And then you'll be greeted with the actual RetroPie things. You can put your ROMs and stuff on there um, and it's all good and dandy. So with the actual thing in, uh, you know, you've got all your different ROMs. If I turn on my controller. So you've got all your other ROMs, you know, so your Nintendo Cube, Macintosh, MAME and stuff like that. Nintendo, MS-DOS, all that stuff. Um, but if you want to put ROMs on there, most of the times you just put a USB in the back like that USB there, and then it downloads to the files, but it's a bit different with this one. If you do it, it's a little bit different, so I'll quickly show you how to put ROMs into a, the Raspberry Pi 5 version. What you wanna do is you wanna go down to configuration and tools. You wanna go down to where it says auto start. So instead of starting the emulation at boost, you just go down to desktop login, Perform reboot. Go into your documents, go to RetroPive and ROMs, and then you just put whatever emulator or ROM you want into whatever console you want to play off. And yeah. And then there's another folder for BIOS if you want to put your BIOS in, and then yeah. And then you're pretty much ready to play whatever games you want. And um, yeah. Pretty easy, I guess. I don't know. I'm, I'm not good at explaining this kind of shit, man. I'm just doing the, doing the best.